was a devoted father, a devoted husband. I don't mind how much it will cost me, lawyer. All I want is to lay my hands on that will. Beautiful houses and expensive houses the federal government and the private sector build in Abuja and improve the vista of Abuja. But no matter how expensive and how good our road network is, Abuja in Africa is one of the cities that have the best road network. But no matter how good the road network is and facilitate our movement and improve the elegance of Abuja, we cannot say Abuja is a modern town. If people have to sing their bowels or generate their own electricity. Former President Goodluck Jonathan at the commissioning of the 18.09 billion Naira phases 3 and 4 of the Lower Usman Dam treatment plant in Bwari Area Council of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, in April 2014, nine years after contract was awarded for the project. The Lower Usman Dam has four functional treatment plants, reputed to be one of the largest in Africa, and receives additional supply on transfer from the multipurpose Gurara Dam in neighboring Kaduna State, northwest Nigeria. The dam today is said to have the capacity to meet the water needs of residents of the territory, but the reticulation facilities, including pipes, to evacuate treated water for supply and distribute across the territory are simply not available, so the dam remains underutilized. This gave birth to approval of the $470 million Greater Abuja Water Works Project by the Federal Executive Council on March 8, 2017. However, two years and counting, water pipes for the contract which is funded with a loan facility from the China Export and Import Bank to extend supply of clean and safe water from the Lower Osman Dam to 28 of the 74 official districts in the federal capital city has been able to cover only seven of the 33 kilometers in the phase one of the project. what we are having now, the bottle of water we can produce cannot be fully uh, utilized by the distribution network because of the constant in the distribution system. So the process of that is, is a challenge to us because we produce water that we don't be able to send down the, uh, the customers. This is a straight talk, and I am TV Tav in Abuja. And welcome all our viewers in Nigeria and around the world to the program. You can actually also follow in the conversation uh, here on my uh, social media platforms on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and LinkedIn with all the handles on the webpage of our partners, uh, Media Dimensions uh, Life, the Media Services Resource Center. Provision of portable, clean, and safe water to the citizens is on the concurrent legislative list of the 1999 Nigerian Constitution as amended, making it the responsibility of the federal and state governments. And for the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, which is constitutionally, quote, as if it were one of the states of the Federation, end of quote, 
sections 299A and 301A of the Constitution recognize the country's president as the governor of the territory. And in exercising that constitutional power and authority, section 302 provides that the president may appoint a minister for the territory who shall exercise such functions as may be delegated to him by the president from time to time. Governance and a provision of infrastructure and basic amenities, including public water supply in the nation's capital, is therefore, as of today, the responsibility of the president and the federal government. This is the water transfer channel discharging raw water from the Gurara Dam in neighboring Kaduna State into the Lower Osman Dam located in Buari Area Council of the Territory. Constructed in the 1980s, the Lower Osman Dam has been upgraded over the years with a 100 million cubic meters maximum capacity reservoir. It is usually recharged uh, with raw water from the Gurara Dam when water in its 1,300 meters long main dam is low and not enough to meet the needs of the capital city. The situation here is that the government realized over the years that Gura, uh, Usuma Dam can no longer meet the demand of FCT supply and there is already uh, a plan. The, this plan has been part of the initial master plan of Abuja water supply system to explore the upper Gurara to get uh, raw water into Usumada. So the, the situation we have is such that we are going on, we are producing at 24 hours per day in Usumada. So once we have the dry season, the consumption is very high. And again, you have the dam level, as you can see behind me, the intake tower. You can see the drop down from the intake tower. That shows you that with 24 hour production, we cannot continue to, uh, the dam cannot sustain the water need of city. We have to pump. So another situation, that is when the Gurara uh, water is needed to augment what we have here. What are the other plans uh, we have? Because if we have uh, this, we have Gurara, and the population in Abuja continues to grow every day. Um, uh, are there fears that we possibly may be needing another water project for the territory? No, the presently in uh, what we have on ground now, we have just phases one to four. There is plan for phase five and six, which is in the drawing board now. Very soon to be actualized even at the same location. That's the treatment plan? Yes. What of the raw water? We have the, presently, Gurara will be serving us direct into the plant. Uh, now we are just using it as an augmentation to this. But there's a link that links Gurara directly to our plants. Gurara's dam is designed to supply both one to four direct, at the same time, in the filling of Osma Dam, as the case may be. But for now, we're only using the refilling aspect of it, meaning it's no feeding one to four direct. So anytime the, the Osmadam Reservoir goes low, we we'll request for augmentation from, from Gorara, it will boost it up. Once we have sufficient level there, Osmadam can feed one to four by gravity. So since we're enjoying that gravity now, why do we have to engage Gorara direct flow? Meaning you are going to idle one and Osmadam totally. But the time will come for that. But for now, we only need documentation. And that's what we have been doing every year between February and March, six to six, six hours, six to eight, six to eight weeks interval. We extract water enough to replenish the Usman Dam to full capacity. This plant is being operated at 40% capacity. Meaning instead of extracting 20,000 from here, we're only extracting 8,000. There are reasons to, for that. From here, the trunk line that's supposed to convey the water from this plant to city has not been completed. 
for years. I don't know. It's that's engineering. Mm. So with the absence of that trunk line, if you produce 20,000, you cannot evacuate it. Even the 8,000 were evacuating. The old line for plant one and two will tee into it. Even that one has a limited capacity it can carry. Mind you, plant one, the plant, the land is, uh, the plant is 5,000 cubic meter capacity, yeah. and it has a line that is supposed to convey that one. Yeah. We are injecting 8,000 into that line. Yeah. That's a limit, a limit yeah. that line can carry. So that's why we cannot produce more than this, or else we'll be overflowing. If the water go to the line, it cannot it, it bounce back and start overflowing. We're wasting water, wasting chemical. So until the project for the trunk line is completed, from the evacuated water from here, from, from planting to, to, to tank one and six in the city. Tank one is at Dawaki, tank six is at Apo. So the tank, I'm, I'm, I'm aware, tank one, which is in uh, at Dawaki, is 100% completed, but the land has not been laid to it. Likewise, the tank in Apo, tank six, I don't know the level of completion, but even then, the land has not been laid to it. So without those lines, we cannot run so, here 100 percent so as, as we speak mm. uh, construction work is not ongoing on the trunk that will evacuate the water mm. no since uh, 2008 uh, when the multi-billion naira water transfer project from the gurara dam was reportedly completed the lower usman dam has been operating at only 40 percent capacity even with the inauguration of two treatment plants uh, six years later in April 2014. Unfortunately, it is obvious that the dam will continue to operate below its capacity due to the delay and outright insincerity and lack of commitment to execute the Greater Abuja Water Works project, which is designed to evacuate uh, safe and treated water from the dam and supply to homes and uh, businesses to, for the benefit of the people. And as important as uh, this project is, authorities of the Federal Capital Territory Administration, that is the FCTA, including the office of the minister, that of the executive secretary of the Federal Capital Development Authority, FCDA, and the FCT Water Board have repeatedly avoided request to provide updates on the execution of the project, uh, talking of the Greater Abuja, Abuja Water Works, which always points to the fact that something is wrong somewhere. From what we have gathered, however, work on the Greater Abuja Water Works, which contract was reportedly awarded officially by the Federal Executive Council uh, on March 8, 2017, started way back in 2012 with the bulk of the contract awarded to Saplast West Africa Limited, which has its office as an at number one term close of Nile Street, Metama District of the nation's capital. The company was supposed to construct what is called the 40,000 cubic meters tank one and 40,000 cubic meters tank six which are located at Dawaki and Apo areas of the capital city, respectively. The contractor was also supposed to lay 14-inch ductile water pipes from the dam to the tanks 1 and 2, which is a distance of about 33 kilometers, and then tank 6 in Apo. Instructively, tank 2 in Impape is under construction by a different contractor. And as we speak, only seven out of the 33 kilometers of the pipes have so far been laid in more than seven years. You are looking at tank one located in Dawaki, which we are told construction has been completed, but not put to use. The value of the contract given to Saplast West Africa Limited as of 2012 was about 25 billion naira, an equivalent of $69.444 million, for which 13 billion naira has reportedly already been paid. 
It is therefore very difficult to place where the $470 million approved by the Federal Executive Council is supposed to be going to in any case. We also visited the point at which the seven kilometers of the pipes laid uh, was stopped in somewhere in Dawaki. We were told by members of the host community that since the contractor reportedly abandoned the lane of the pipes at this particular point, which is what is left of the project has become a risk to the residents with one school child drowning in the pond that was created by the contractor. So our government is like 0, 0.0 in the water project. They dug the place, leave it like that. Children go in, die inside. You know, like even last year, we find out one small baby inside the pit there. And it's something in a, in a civilized nation, you have, the government will pay for that. Because they, don't, they are not supposed to start a project that they can't finish. So it's just like that. We have been looking at it, then we are taking precaution. We are advising that a child should not go close to that place because it doesn't it don't make sense. They, they start digging the place since two, three years back. They just leave it halfway. So we don't have much to say. That water project too, seriously. You don't tell why I see, say, they don't stop that work for here. Then they start the work for here. Because you can remember, if I remember last, last some years ago, one child, they have so one uh, boy dead inside this water here. So since then, people are complaining to come and do their place, but still up to now, they never do it. If they cannot do anything for this uh, water line, serious, they should come and cover it so that the place, the environment will get safety. Even our students, they will get safety. So even we will be happy. From Ndawaki through Guarimpa to Jahi districts of the capital city, a number of water pipes have been abandoned by the roadside. It is the same scenario along Apu in Gudu district and Lukuguma district of the capital city where the pipes are also left by the roadside, perhaps that they would be laid along those places and connected to the tanks one and two and then tank six which is located around the popular Apo Mechanic Village. Before we reach this place that it is mentioned for 70 million, we have worked almost two and a half years to reach this place. We make so many stages in terms of design, even though the whole responsibility is FCDA, but there are this portion of what that we have done before it reached to this place. So uh, reaching this uh, amount and mentioning it in the, to the public has shown that you must understand that there is a lot of work that has been done. And in conclusion, also before the implementation of contract, you know there are so many agreements to be signed, understanding bilateral cooperation and a solemn scheme with the government. So it's something that the government is, that is sorting out at the moment. Good enough, but it appears that the water distribution network to be provided across 28 of the 74 districts in the federal capital city by the Greater Abuja Water Works project, which is to be probably implemented completely in full by Chinese companies with the loan from the China Exim Bank amounts to ripping off Nigeria. It is difficult to understand how the huge construction of two gigantic tanks of 400,000 cubic meters each and the laying of 14-inch ductile pipes to cover 33 kilometers will cost 25 billion naira, which is an equivalent of 69.444 million dollars. But then the laying of smaller pipes across 20 four districts will cost a whopping $470 million, an equivalent of 
billion naira. That is way higher than the single annual budget of most of the 36 states of the Federation. Notwithstanding the non-completion of the initial project by Surplus West Africa Limited in the last seven years and counting, we make it impossible for any other contractor, including anyone from China, to want to lay distribution pipes that will connect affected districts and communities to the supply of water from the lower Usman Dam. Established in 1973, um, the company that is uh, Surplus West Africa, which claims it employs over 500 staff and workers, with its best record being the laying of 50 kilometers of GRP piping up to ND 1,400 mm in about 50 years of its existence, has allegedly been unable to keep its uh, workers who protest the unfriendly labor practices of the management and the inability of the company to pay uh, their salaries, wages, and entitlement over the years. So this has been going on and they are continuing, they are making money. Then the project that was going on Paris Pasu with this one in Abuja, in Nasarawa State, that is what makes us to come out at the end of the day. They said they are going to settle all our standing from that contract. So we are told, and uh, they called us for another job on, uh, by uh, November 2017 for a three weeks job, which they agreed to pay a month salary for that three weeks job. That we, they want us to deliver it. So we lay a pipe of GRP pipe and ductile pipe of 100 meters at Dawaki Aziz towards news engineering. We did that work on three, under three weeks and we delivered it, hoping that they will settle us. Before this job was done, the worker came and stopped the work because we felt that we were supposed to be paid. We are at home and you are getting job. So they begged. And the FCDA man, the RA that on the job, Engineer Booker, said that the company is going to receive almost 3 billion bond that the work will resume properly in January 2018. So we are, the workers now allowed them to carry out that three weeks or based on that Promises. promises. So we did that three weeks job and they paid only three weeks money. They even violated the agreement we had with them. So everybody now went home hoping that that December they will see a lot of payment and all those stuff. We did not see any alert. So we now waited until on the 20th of February, one of our workers that was living close to the site we stopped at Dawaki saw them, the management and especially the engineer in charge of this contract, our ED, engineer Iberiri John was there with FCDA staff. Those are the monitoring committee. And they are the last set of people that will come. And after they come, they will release cash. Why we locked the site since June, January 2018 to dialogue with us, they went behind us and hired foreign operators. They took out two excavators, one dozer and uh, one uh, roller. They went there and formed as if their project was on. They spent only five minutes. The FCDA people came with camera and they spent only five minutes to witness a caricature kind of engineering work. And they did that under five minutes and went back to the office and we know that they released money to them. So we now felt that we should not engage them. We tell them, leave them and let them do it because they are looking for money to pay us. To our greater surprise, we waited till almost end of uh, February. We now engaged them again. We came here as workers' representative to meet with the management. But to our greater surprise, the engineer, engineer John Eberiri, got up, the ED, and told us to our face that we should just go home, that we should forget about our pay. From 2015 March, they closed the site and they have been using us to work on casual basis still. That we should forget about long sum of our money, that what they will, we will enjoy is year of service, as if the company belongs to all of us. We now went back to Waka Waka was furious that what way can we go again to solve this problem? Then we now felt that now we need to take another step. We seek opinions from people that are involved in this and they ask us to go to the labor. Because labor, they own the employer and the employees. But we are very surprised since on the night, on the night of May, we wrote to labor, to Minister of Labor, through the permanent stakeholders where we submitted. And they gave us somebody that is a controller of labor in Abuja FCT. She and her team, almost five of them, are on this issue since on the 24th of July. We have approached the management of the company to respond to the allegations by its workers 
who have not uh, been paid since March 2015, with the company having abandoned work on the Greater Abuja Water Works project in November 2017. Meanwhile, as uncertainty uh, and a number of unanswered questions uh, surround the multi-billion dollar Greater Abuja Water Works uh, project, with any little hope of its uh, early completion fading away by the second, there are hundreds of uh, communities across the territory that are without portable water. And uh, public supply is just but a dream for most of them. One of such uh, communities is a Karshi satellite town in Abuja Municipal Area Council, talking of uh, Amak of the territory, where an earth dam has been under construction for several years without completion. This is the Karshi dam uh, with treatment plant, tank, and other bulk water supply infrastructure by the FCT authorities since the project was transferred from the national priority budget of the territory in 2015 to the FCT statutory budget in 2016 under the Satellite Towns Development Department, STDD, of the FCT administration that has the project located just by meters away behind its head office, also located in Karshi Satellite Town. As we speak, Three of the six area councils in the territory, namely Abaji, Kwale, and Kuji, are without public water supply. In Abaji Area Council, the multi-million naira meaning water township project initiated under the, a counterpart funding arrangement under the defunct Millennium Development Goals, talking of the MDGs, MDGs to serve five communities within Abaji satellite town remain uncompleted after several years with promises to complete the project made by successive administrations, but none kept so far. This may just explain why in the MDG's baseline study for the territory, 50% of communities in the Abaji Area Council depend on streams and rivers as sources of water for drinking, cooking and other household use. And for Kwali Area Council that also has no water scheme, only 30% of its communities have access to borehole, out of which 14% of the borehole facilities are not even in functional conditions. And in Kuje Area Council, there is the highest percentage of 63 of the communities there depending solely on streams and rivers for water, with only 3% of the households having access to portable water in form of boreholes drilled by private individuals and donor agencies. <music>